What is going on, everybody? I am back today to talk about a new film that was released on VOD that I didn't really know much about. I just went into this movie blind. I thought the poster looked pretty cool, and I read the brief plot synopsis. And this was a movie set at a diner in the middle of nowhere where this young girl was running the restaurant, and she is being tormented by these people in masks who are trying to hurt her. And I was like, I love movies set in an isolated spot where a person has to fight for survival. So that was enough for me to jump in and watch this movie and the film I'm going to be telling you about today is Last Straw. Last Straw is directed by Alan Scott Neal. A roadside diner becomes the host of a maniacal killing spree, leaving a young waitress to clean up the mess. After hard-headed Nancy fires the staff at her dad's diner, she decides to cover the last shift of the night by herself. Little does she know she is far from alone. The day is coming back to haunt her and when things begin to spiral out of control, she must fight for her life over the course of one night. So, like I said, I like survival movies. I love movies set in kind of an isolated location. And this movie is unfortunately not very good. It takes a lot of creative risks, tries to do something a little bit different with this sort of plot, but none of it really works. It's very cliche. The story is uninteresting. The way that they try to flesh out specific characters and kind of humanize certain characters, it doesn't really work in the grand scheme of things in the way that I think that the movie wants it to. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it today. I can't talk about the movie as a whole without spoiling it entirely. So I'm going to give spoilers towards the end of the video. But for starters, I'm going to keep it spoiler free. Just tell you a little bit about it today. So the beginning of the movie, we are introduced to Nancy, played by Jessica Belkin, who her father owns this diner. And the diner is struggling. He's doing everything that he can to keep it afloat. And she is the manager of the diner. And they have probably more employees that they need. The business is always constantly slow and her dad wants to go on a date. She doesn't really know what he's going for. We learn later on that it is for a date and he says, are you okay taking care of the restaurant by yourself tonight with just this one other guy? And she's like, I guess, whatever, I'll work the shift. So he ends up leaving for the day and these four kids pull up on these mopeds and bring like roadkill into the restaurant. They come in and treat her really badly. She ends up throwing them out and she gets into a tiff with the guy that she is supposed to close the restaurant with. He gives her a bunch of lip and she ends up firing him. And so everybody leaves for the night and she is left at the diner by herself. And at first everything is completely and totally normal until people start pounding on the side of the diner and trying to terrorize her. She ends up calling the police, and while she waits on the police to get there, the film is her trying to fight for her survival. So like I said, I didn't like this movie very much. I feel like it's incredibly cliche and formulaic, and it tries to take some creative risks, but the risks that it takes don't necessarily make the movie any more interesting. I'll start with some of the positives. I like the way this movie was shot. I think it, it's there's a lot of attention to the detail in the cinematography. Love just the neon of the diner. I love the certain attention to detail and where they place characters in the frame, especially to create tension. I think that there's a lot to commend with the visual style of the film. The score of this movie is incredible. It's a heavy synth driven score that I think makes the movie really intense and pack a punch in some of the more violent moments. And I love that they're just the perfect musical choices in the perfect moments to just accompany that feeling so well. And I loved that a lot about the movie. I think that score is just amazing and the visual style makes it easy to kind of settle yourself into. But that is about all I've got. Everything else with this movie is so incredibly cliche. The performances aren't that great. I did like our lead actress. I thought she was really solid. But a lot of the guys that work at the diner, their acting isn't all that great. One of the characters um, is struggling with drug addiction and I felt like all of his like side plot stuff just didn't work well for me I like just the way his the direction his character went I wasn't a huge fan of his performance so that pulled me out of the movie a little bit a lot of the scenes are just very predictable they go exactly in the direction that you would assume they would even at like the point where the cops show up just like we've seen this movie before and it's fine when you when movies like this have existed previously but try and do something different. Do something that we haven't seen to shake up the normalcy a little bit. And that is about the most that I can talk about without discussing my biggest qualm with the movie because my biggest qualm involves the big spoiler of the movie. And so if you want to watch this movie and you don't want it spoiled for you, 
pause the review here and come back to watch it after you've seen the movie. If you don't care, you can continue to watch. So the spoiler of the movie is the people terrorizing at her at the diner are the people who work for her. It's all the guys that work at the diner, even the guy who has a romantic interest in her. And what sets everything off is she fights for herself and she ends up stabbing one of the guys who works at the di diner, who is the main supervisor that she fired. Uh, brother, I believe, who has a disability. And so that sets off a whole set of circumstances where we shift perspectives into why this character has decided to torment this young woman at the diner while she is by herself. And so the shift in perspective is giving the motivation behind why he is doing this. And they try to make his character plagued with this troubled past so that you'll feel some kind of empathy for him. But it's done in the most hokey, Hallmark-style way imagined that all of the emotion feels incredibly inauthentic. And what's interesting is where this young girl, uh, she's got kind of an attitude. She's, she's a kid, graduated college, and she's the one who you're supposed to be rooting for early on, but it makes it kind of hard to root for her when she's so incredibly unlikable and miserable. And when you're empathizing the character who's kind of an asshole, it just makes the movie a very weird experience. And I don't think any of the emotional beats pay off in the way that the director wants them to, which makes the movie kind of a hard watch. And then once the perspective shift stops and you play out the third act of the movie, it just goes exactly in the direction that you would assume it was. There's a lot of violence and blood and gore, but I was so pulled out at that point in the movie, I just didn't really care where it went anymore. And I feel like there have been a ton of movies like this that are so much better. And this movie doesn't add anything new into the conversation other than it has a really fantastic score that I enjoyed listening to. So have you seen Last Straw? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. I thought this movie was incredibly lackluster, which is disappointing because it had a really cool premise. As always, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.